Satvang priyan priyarupang shakaman abhidhyaya nachiketo chasrakshi naitang shrinkang vittamai mavapto yasyang majanti bhavo manushya. O Nachiketa, you, such as you are, have discarded, after consideration, all the desirable things that are themselves delightful or are the producers of delight. You have not accepted this path of wealth in which many a man comes to grief. Shankaracharya's Tika Satvam, you, such as you are, though tempted by me again and again, apidyayam, having considered the defects such as impermanence and unsubstantiality of kaman, desirable things, that is, priyan, dear ones such as children, etc., cha, and priyarupan, producers of delight such as nymphs, etc., Nachiketaha, O Nachiketa, Atyasrakshi, you have discarded. What an intelligence you have. Na Avaptaha, you have not accepted. Etam, this ugly shrinkam, coarse. Vitamaim, abounding in wealth, which is resorted to by ignorant people. Yasyam, in which course, Bahavaha, many, Manushyaha, men, Majanti, sink, come to grief. It has been said in the previous verse, good befalls him who accepts the preferable among these two. He who selects the pleasurable falls from the true end. Why is that so? Because Durame te viparite visuchi avidyaya chavidyeti gnata vidya bhipsinang nachiketa sang manye natvakama bahavo lolupanta. That known as knowledge and that known as ignorance are widely contradictory, and they follow divergent courses. I consider Nachiketa to be an aspirant for knowledge because the enjoyable things, multifarious though they be, did not tempt you. And the Tika, Ete, these two, are Duram, widely by a great distance, Viparite, contradictory, mutually exclusive, like light and darkness, they being of the nature of discrimination and non-discrimination. Vishuchi, have divergent courses, that is, they produce different results, being the cause of worldly existence and emancipation, respectively. This is the idea. Which are they? The answer is yacha, that which jnata is fully ascertained, known by the learned, avidya iti as ignorance, which has for its object the pleasurable, yacha, and that which is known, vidya iti as knowledge, which has for its object the preferable. Of these two, Manye, I consider you, Nachiketa Sam, Nachiketa, Vidya Bhipsinam, as desirous of knowledge. Why? Because Kama, the enjoyable things such as nymphs, etc., which distract the intellect of the unenlightened, although they are Bahavaha, many, they Na Olunupanta, did not tempt, tva, you, did not deflect you from the path of the preferable by arousing a desire for enjoying them. 
Therefore, I consider you to be craving for enlightenment, to be fit for the preferable. This is the idea. Namaste. So, last time we discussed the preferable versus the pleasurable. Most people in this life choose the pleasurable. And so they run after wealth and enjoyment of various kinds and thereby become entangled, leading to suffering. And of course, the worst suffering is you have to take another body. After this body is finished, you have to come back as a human being. And if you have followed the pravriti marg, the path of enjoyment of material wealth and so on, you come back in a lower status of life. Whereas, if you choose the path of wisdom, of knowledge of the Absolute, you run after that knowledge huh? instead of enjoyment. Because these two paths are completely opposite. They go in different directions. They are mutually exclusive. You cannot have both. You have to choose one or the other because they're incompatible. You know, it's like, how can I say, if you're designing a piece of uh, electronic equipment, you have to decide right in the beginning, is it going to run on AC or DC? Uh, they're incompatible. They're completely different standards. They don't match. They don't work together. You have to choose one or the other. And it's the same way in life. In life, we are constantly faced with the choice between the pleasurable and the preferable. You know, when I read these verses, <laughs> I feel like death is speaking to me personally. Honestly, I have this feeling like he's got me in his crosshairs. He knows me. Uh, he's speaking right to my heart. Because in my life, I had always chosen knowledge over pleasure. I had a craving for knowledge, like Nachiketa, and I couldn't be swayed from it. And I remember some of my earliest memories when I was like, I don't know, three or four years old, I got invited to a birthday party. This is the first birthday party, my first real socialization with people outside my family. It was at one of the neighbor's houses, just two or three houses down the street. So I went there, and there were all these kids my age. And they were playing various games and this and that and running around and being silly. You know how kids are. And I felt completely alienated. I looked at them and I said, these guys are stupid. What are they doing? Why are they wasting their time? You know, by this time, I was already reading the New York Times, looking up words in the dictionary that I didn't know. So to me, it seemed like these kids were just, you know, engaging in frivolity. And they were, as it turns out. I wasn't wrong. So, death here talks the same way to Nachiketa. He says, you are not tempted to go down this path. You know, even though he has paid the price of being alienated from his own family, I paid that same price too. Because, you know, watching my family get drunk on Saturday nights and act like a bunch of fools... To me, it, it alienated me from them. It separated me from them. It became clear to me very early on, I had different aims in life. I did not want to go down that same path. I could see how you know, they worked hard their whole life for some companies, and then at the end of the life, they're totally burned out, used up. And what have they gained? Okay, maybe they have a nice house and a car and this and that stuff, you know. 
But as far as their being, what have they gained? You know, by the time I was in high school, what, I guess uh, 12, 13 years old, I was reading books on psychology. Um, what was it? Eric Fromm and um, Carl Jung and people like that. And I was like trying to share some of these insights with my family. They couldn't hear it. They didn't want to understand it. Not only they couldn't understand, but they didn't want to understand. And this is the fundamental difference between a man of the world and a man of knowledge. A man of knowledge fundamentally wants to understand the deeper truths in everything. He is not content with the conventional view. He is not content with the ordinary course of life that obviously just leads to decrepitude and suffering. Rather, he is willing to sacrifice all that to attain transcendence, a higher state of being, a higher state of consciousness. So these verses speak deeply to my heart because the path of knowledge is very lonely. You have to consciously decide, willingly accept this path of alienation from the great majority of people and society. It's not an easy thing. It can be very scary and lonely cold and dark but the end is worth all of it to know to understand to see how everything is working uh, how god exists in everything and everything exists in god i mean th what price can you put on this and also knowing that one is going to a much higher destination in the next life. When this body is finished, when the prarabdha karma is used up, when the body finally drops off, huh, all of the things that are holding us back from fully embracing with and merging with Brahman fall away. There's no more barriers. There's no more separation. There's no more illusion. Uh, so this is really the end of this path of knowledge, which is worthwhile. And we'll see in the succeeding verses and chapters how death instructs Stachiketa from the beginning to the ultimate end of this great path of knowledge and finally accepts him as equal with himself. Aung Tat Sat. Aung Shakti Aung. Aung Namah Shivaya.